Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today uh, I am going over this Gottlieb High Score Pinball Machine that I picked up recently and just uh, kind of doing a survey of it. I finally hooked it up and plugged it in and it was able to start a game and partially play but there are some issues with it. And I'll go over um, what I've discovered so far with this game. Um, first off, um, the plunger was not uh, was kind of messed up and I just went ahead and ordered a whole new plunger assembly even though this one could be repaired. There's normally a plate that goes right here that's missing and they had one bolt off of it and uh, a washer mission. I'll clean this up and I'll use this in case I ever need it in another machine but I went ahead and replaced the entire shooter assembly picked up the parts from Steve Young so I've got a new shooter assembly down there um, I've also cleaned the play field, pulled the plastics off and cleaned them. I've got a layer of wax on the top part of the play field. I noticed that the flippers on this game are pretty interesting. It has four flippers um, and they're in tandem. So if you look right here, this is a flipper assembly. It's driven by one coil and there's two flippers here. So when the coil pulls, these two flippers go like that. Um, so it's a confusing kind of uh, flipper action because you've got four flippers on the bottom of this game and uh, you've got two on each side. So you've got a set, on the, a set on the left like this and they both go up at the same time they're in tandem and then there's another set on the right that does the same thing. So when you hit the left flipper button, it flips both of the left flippers, which is a right flipper and a left flipper on the left. And when you hit the right flipper button, it does the same tandem flippers on the right. It's very odd, confusing to play. Um, I was not really able to get a game going because normally I don't like playing these games when I first pick them up. This game had been in storage for a while, so you have no idea what's wrong with it, and I didn't want to get into it too much if there was any broken wires. So now I just pulled the play field up and I'm surveying some stuff, and one of the things I noticed was the right flippers weren't working properly. They weren't going up all the way. So if you look, here's the left flipper assembly, and let's just uh, let's demonstrate what, what the flipper assembly looks like. Okay, so you've got the coil right here and then this pulls in and you've got two flippers right here and this flipper goes like that and this flipper goes like that so when this pulls both flippers flip up so this is how it's supposed to work now it looks like somebody has lubricated this with grease so it doesn't go very smoothly and it's a little bit sticky here so this whole assembly is going to need to be taken apart cleaned and uh, not, you know, get got rid of all the other lubrication. I will spray some silicone lube on it and then wipe it dry. I don't like to use any kind of real liquid lube, but I will use some spray stuff. So I'll have to clean all these little things here. The, uh, the Bakelite arms here seem to all be in pretty good shape. One of the things you want to check is the play. How much, how much play is there in this? Like if this, if this hole's dug through, there's not there's not a lot of play. See, there's not a lot of play there. So these are these are in good shape. They don't need to be replaced or anything. But they, this assembly should be taken off and cleaned. It doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult to do. There's going to be a, a set screw on each flipper that will take this assembly off. And then if I undo uh, the bracket here, I think I can pull this whole assembly off um, in one piece and then just clean it. So that's what I'm going to do with both sides. Now let's take a look at the uh, the other side and why what's wrong with the other side. The other side is not working properly, and I'll show you. See it's see it's wiggly. Look at that. That's not right. So the, it, it goes up and it doesn't go back down. This one, this one pops. It snaps back. I let go. It snaps back. This one, I let I let go and it doesn't really snap back. So something's wrong with that. What I've identified is there's a bushing underneath here and it's broken. This bushing is broken. The only thing that's holding it together is the flipper pawl coming through there is holding the whole assembly together. But this plastic piece is literally broken. So the bushing that the flipper flips in has broken and it's causing this lateral movement and so it just makes it, and that coupled with the fact that um, that it's been lubricated and there's some gunk on it is causing this whole assembly to not work right. See? 
Look at that, it's stuck. So I'm gonna have to take this whole assembly off. I'm gonna have to get a new flipper, flipper bushing here. This is something that's a pretty obscure part since this is a 1950s game. So ironically, I'll have to be placing another order with Steve Young at Pinball Resource because I mean, I guess it's possible that other places have it, but he'll be my go-to guy. So this uh, plastic bushing is gonna need to be replaced. So this is one of those frustrating things with working on pinball machines is um, some of these parts are pretty hard to find. So you order the parts you think you need and you start diving in, you realize a few more things are broken. That's why it's really important to do as thorough a survey as possible before you make your order for parts because there's almost always gonna be something else that you're gonna need. I haven't done a ton of work on these 50s era games so I don't have a lot of spare parts. Now you can bet though, when I order this, this bushing, I'm gonna get several more of them. Um, just to have them around in case so I don't have to end up waiting you know a week or two to continue work. Um, other than that everything else in the game looks pretty good. I really like these old 50s era games where they use this copper plated on everything. It's really beautiful. It, 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 you know um, 50 years, more than 50 years later this still holds up. This plating, whatever they used there's no corrosion on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and, it's, and it's everywhere in the game. Like even these little plates here. It's like a, it's like a copper or a brass um, coated. You know, instead of chromed, it's, it's coated with something slightly different. And it just, it's beautiful. It looks beautiful. Um, I imagine when these games were new, those things, it was sparkling and it looked really pretty. And somewhere in the 60s, early 60s I think they stopped doing this but whatever they whatever plating process they were using boy does it hold up it holds up really well and even the the, the leg bolts and other stuff they 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 plated them with this um, so chances are there's going to be a bunch of switches that are going to need to be cleaned this is one of the switch banks I'll, I can you can I can undo these two screws here and flip this out and service both sides of it um, the game seems to be working fine. I did notice that the ball stepper unit is t as typical malfunctioning, um, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that. So that's where I'm at with this game. Let's pull the let's pull the playfield down and give you a look at it. This probably looks weird when I'm talking about the flippers and you can't see the front side to see exactly what the problem is I'm talking about. Um, so there you can see the two sets of tandem flippers. Let me drop the playfield completely in. There we go. And there's the, the new fl the new flipper rod. And I'll adjust this so that it's right in the right in there in the middle. That's all. That's already a, a dramatic improvement. So you can see we've got the two flippers. That's the way they're supposed to work. Flipping up. Now look at these. See, they just stay up. This, this flipper bushing is supposed to be nice and tight. This one is, they're not. So the flippers are going to need to be rebuilt. It looks a little dingy because I, I've got wax down that I haven't wiped off. But I've cleaned this, cleaned the plastics, and uh, it's not too bad. You know, I mean, I didn't pull everything off and clean every little nook and cranny. But I cleaned as much as I could, and um, when this wax dries, I'll, I'll clean it all off. It'll look even nicer. I also took this plastic thing off and cleaned it, and uh, there was a little tiny crack that I used some uh, some cement to kind of reinforce. So I think that'll that'll help that. And uh, I've thrown a few little LEDs here and there, and um, just because I didn't want to have to service them. So you can kind of see the there, there's warm white LEDs up in here, and they look pretty. They look pretty good. I threw a few cool white whites down here, so this bottom row here is uh, definitely different. But if I put all warm whites, you wouldn't even you probably wouldn't even know they were LEDs unless you were looking closely. They're except they're a little bit brighter. Um, the back box I pulled the. Um, back glass and I've triple thicked it and it's in the back. Um, interesting that these games have bayonet 47 
bulbs in them. I, I, I thought all these older games was all 44, 47s, or, you know, 44s in here. But these have some, uh, some of the bayonet ones, which is uh, interesting. I didn't realize they were being used on these early games. Uh, now, I'm inclined to probably put LEDs in here in, in the back of this, too. Um, it just depends. I mean, this is, this is not a particularly valuable game. I don't know how long it may be in our collection, uh, so I don't know if I want to throw a lot into it. It's not a game that I would put on location, um, so there's no real need to necessarily reduce the power footprint. I don't know. We'll see. But um, I do think this is going to be a fun game to get working, and hopefully I'll have it working soon. I'm just going to wait for these parts to come in. So. There's where we're at. This is the fir first time I've gotten down and dirty into the machine and started to play around with it. And um, it's looking pretty good. I'm looking forward to playing this. And I like this little roulette wheel, which affects the values of these drop targets and stuff like that. So it's pretty neat. And uh, hopefully there'll be another installment soon when, when I get the parts in and I'll show you the progress and maybe we'll get a gameplay video. So thanks for watching. Uh, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, go to it, YouTube slash pinball help and um, catch pinball help on there's a subreddit reddit slash r slash pinball help and of course on uh, facebook slash pinball help and until next time thanks for watching